Okay, triangles. If you've done any reading about graphics before, you know that we are going to spend a lot of time on triangles. Today, not so much, but we'll keep coming back to them. Triangles, as we will learn, are one of the best fundamental building blocks in graphics because you can optimize them just so well. So if I follow the thread, we talked about points. We can use points to make lines. If we can make lines, now we can make triangles. We make them using, um, we make them using lines. Cool. So here's how they look in OpenGL. Begin shape triangles. So begin shape triangles. Now you give vertex like this. Vertex. Come on. There we go. And then you can keep going. Until the end. And then we end our shape. One thing I don't think I mentioned, the reason that the OpenGL immediate mode did it like this, where you begin a shape and end a shape, is because you're loading things into the driver. And it doesn't want to be loading things into the video card until it really needs to, or, or compiling them until it needs to. So you begin your shape, you end your shape, you've told OpenGL, I'm done with that shape. You can do what you want with it now. So that's why it has that pattern. Things are changing now. Um, but this focus on optimization and letting things know, letting the card know or the driver know when things are happening is still really important. So with, with this code here, I begin shape triangles, cool. And as you might guess, every three vertices is one triangle. No surprise here. And then uh, one triangle. And then every three vertices gets you um, one triangle. Now, one thing about OpenGL is that it always fills the triangles. Where are we? Good, right, right. So OpenGL will always fill the triangles. You can't just get the outline. Can you think while I write this, how would I get an outline? So open. GL always fills. Always fills the triangle. If you just want to do the outlines, you're using the wrong tool. Triangles is not what to use. Just use a line strip. You can call line strip, etc. with the same points. Okay, no big deal. In processing, you can add an outline. You just use um, stroke. So no big deal. Let's do a demo. Uh, wrong slide. Let's go to, there we go. So here's an example. Ignore the commented out stuff. We'll come back to that shortly. Same size. Um, one thing we've done is we've changed the color mode to be scaled to one instead of being scaled at 256. Again, with graphics, as you'll see, there's so many ways to configure it. You have to be flexible when you're looking online and looking at code or looking at textbooks, okay? We'll skip this for now. We set the background color to white. Um, we set the stroke color to black. Um, and set the fill color, you'll see here, uh, green and blue mixed, right? So we begin to shape triangles, cool, and I create my first triangle, and I've commented out the rest. So I'm going to watch this. It should work just fine. Yay, we have a triangle. And now I'm going to make another triangle. And the other portion of the screen. Good, no problem. So I can add a second triangle to my begin shape. I can have as many as I want. And I'll add this third one. Now I want you to pay attention to this third one here. Look closely. Anything suspicious strike you about those coordinates? 
Well, we'll see very shortly um, what's wrong with them. There we go. What's wrong with these coordinates is it doesn't really make a triangle because this first point and this last point and the middle point are all collinear. They're all on a line. These are collinear points. So it's not really a triangle at all. But we can still see the outline here. Now, I told you that OpenGL doesn't do that for you. OpenGL will fill. It doesn't do the outline. This is a processing thing. So I can tell processing, hey, hey processing, stop doing my outline for me. So I put a no stroke. I got rid of my stroke color. And let's see what happens. This is what would happen in OpenGL. And that triangle just disappears because it has no area. It, it has no place to fill. There's no fill in there. So if you're, you're using most graphics programs, they won't do the outline for you. That triangle will just disappear. So the first thing, um, this was, this was um, I should write that in my slides. Demo sketch one. The first thing you'll notice is, uh, first thing I want to talk about, sorry, is this idea of degenerate triangles. So a degenerate, degenerate triangles are basically not triangles, okay? If it has no area, that has no area. Okay, so like that, um, like that, you know, all three at one spot. This is two points at one spot, all three at one spot, or all three. These are all examples of degenerate triangles. Now, there's something else I want to show you in this demo. Oops, did it again. Um, something else I want to show you in this demo. So this is definitely not going to be obvious. But there are some important, this, is de, this last one's degenerate, so it's gone, fine. But there's an important difference between these two triangles that's really not obvious, so you're probably not seeing it. Negative and plus, nope, that's not it. That's just what part of the screen it's on. So I can highlight this by turning on this code, which I'll talk about shortly. I'll come back and talk about this. So let's run this code. One triangle disappears. Okay, why is that? Well, it be it's because of a really important property of triangles. And this is called, uh, triangles have what's called winding. So that was demo to show you what winding looks like. So let me explain what the heck I'm talking about. Basically, triangles have um, a direction that you specify the points in. So if I'm going to, I draw two triangles here, V0, V1, V2. I'm going to draw another triangle over here. I'm going to put V0 here, V1 over here, and V2. Now these can be the exact same triangles with the exact same coordinates. The difference is, in this case, Z0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 0, this goes in a counterclockwise fashion, okay? This is called a counterclockwise winding. So they're the exact same points, but the order that you give them in gives it a counterclockwise winding. The other one, winding, the other one, 0 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 0, this is a, actually I'm going to erase that, this is a clockwise winding, and then in our program, it decided not to draw that. Okay, now why on earth would it, uh, why on earth would it do that? So let's go back here. First of all, I told it to. I set some GL properties here. Um, I told it, let's enable face culling. Culling means you're right, removing, cutting faces. And then we'll cut ones that are facing back to us. And the front is the counterclockwise winding. So I said this. A lot of you are going, what? Um, so we're going to come back to this after I explain a bit more about um, 
winding or I want you to come back to this rather and this will make a lot more a lot more sense but first I want to highlight why this idea is important so here's some code I'm not going to get into it but it does the same thing as telling GL to turn off some faces turn them off if they're facing away from us and determine this with clockwise counterclockwise winding which again will explain so here's a 3d example that I'd like to show um, where we have this this thing with four faces one red green um, gray white and blue so we have these four faces and it's drawing these triangles and we'll learn a bit later in the course how to make them look 3d like that but what I want to show you is that it's not drawing the faces be on the back of the triangle now you might be thinking of course not it's drawing on top of them they're hidden well it's not that clever we didn't sort them we're not drawing them in any specific order in many cases we're drawing the back ones last and they should be on top right what's happening is when the triangles facing away from us it's telling OpenGL don't draw it call the faces that are facing away from us and only draw the ones that are facing toward us so let's kill that how on earth do we get that to work luckily I know how so it comes back to the math we've been learning we can use the cross product here we use the cross product to determine okay so we use the cross product to determine the winding now the first thing I want to remind you of is that we're using a right handed system remember X goes this way Y goes this way and Z goes this way it's a right handed system um, so we can leverage that in a right handed system um, the counterclockwise winding will have a Z direction that points out will have a cross product will have a cross product that points out of the screen toward the user okay so if I look at the triangle on the left V1 0 to 1 goes this way so let's see if I can get my hand to twist 1 goes this way uh, 1 to 2 goes that way and then my other finger points at me it points at the screen if I go to the clockwise winding V0 goes this way, 1 to 2 goes that way, and it points into the screen. It points away from me, okay? If I go up a clockwise winding, it points away from the user. So we use the direction of that Z angle that, uh, from the cross product to determine the front versus the back of the triangle. That's tricky pause the video work through it with your fingers and make sure you can see how the left one points toward you and the other one points away from you it's tricky okay so this is winding we can determine it with cross product and in a right-handed system the counterclockwise winding will point at me okay let's not talk about left-handed systems <laughs> that's, that's that's a discussion for a uh, for a different day so let's write this out We have counter clockwise winding. So I'm going to draw my triangle over here. So we have, let's put vertice one over here, vertice two up there, and vertice three down there. Now this goes from this, right? So this is a counterclockwise winding. Now the first thing I want to highlight is that remember we can make these sides into vectors and the way that we do that is we use subtraction. So this is edge vector one, this is a vector and I'm going to make it equal to V2 minus V1 and it's going to point in that direction, right? And then I'm going to make um, edge vector two over here, E2 and it's going to point in that direction. Now you can do that by taking V3 minus V2, okay? And then at the bottom, we have edge vector three, oops, we have edge vector 
3, which is v1 minus v3, and it's going to point in that direction. So we've made the vectors from our sides, and then we just cross product them to get it to work. So if I take edge vector 1 and I cross product with edge vector 2, 1 goes to 2. If it's counterclockwise, then it's going to point out of the screen and it's going to be bigger than 0. Right? Just like, um, go back and review your um, cross product notes if you don't remember how that works. Okay, and then the same thing goes for E2 cross product edge vector 3. This is going to be bigger than 0 because the same thing, it points to the user. And edge vector 3 cross product edge vector 1 will be the same thing. All of these will point at the user so they're visible. So they are visible. Okay. Let's actually do the example with the opposite. Let's do a clockwise winding. So again, I draw pretty much the same triangle. Except this time, I'm going to wind it differently. Vector 1 goes here. Vic, uh, <laughs> vector 2 goes vertice. Boy, it's not, they're not vectors at all. They're vertices. Um, and then vertice 3 goes down here. Now, I want to highlight now the winding is in the opposite direction, 1 to 2 to 3. So my E1... My E1 is going to be here, which is V2 minus V1, and it's going to go in this direction. My E2 is going to be over here, is going to be V3 minus V2, and it's going to go in this direction. And at the bottom, my E3 is going to be V1 minus V3, and it's going to go in this direction. I want to highlight first of all that the E's are the same. E1 and E1, same calculation, right? E1 is always going to be 2 minus 1, right? So we have those edge vectors that are the same calculation, but they result in a different direction because of that winding. Now if I write this out, E1 cross product E2, so now I have E1 going in this direction and E2 going in that direction. E1 going in, I can't twist my hand. There we go. And it's going to point into the screen. So it's away from the user. So it's going to be less than 0. E2 cross product edge 3, same thing. It's going to be less than 0. And edge product 3 cross product, um, cross product with edge 1 is going to be less than zero. So they're all going to point away from point away from the viewer. Um, away from the viewer. So then they're going to be hidden. They're going to be cut. What's cool about this is because the triangle only has three points, you don't need to calculate all three of those cross products. Okay, you only need to calculate one. You only need um, to calculate one cross product. They're going to be the same. Um, they're going to be all the same. I'm not going to prove that, but you can try figuring, figuring it out on paper, OK? Um, and it comes down to the fact that the cross product relies on all three points, right? I need all three points to make both vectors, and so the cross product relies on all three points. I'll also say that the triangle is degenerate if one or more cross product is zero. Okay, so you can actually detect that with your cross products. 
I just want to show those degenerate cases. And when they're all collinear, the cross products are zero. They're pointing in the opposite directions, the cross product is zero. So you can quickly determine that from your cross products. So you don't have to waste your time trying to draw it. Now, the, the last thing I want to show is um, that we can do, now that we know about the winding and the cross product, I can talk a little more intelligently about triangle variance. So just like with line, we have line strips, um, we have line, um, those um, lines, line strip, line loop, we have, we have different versions for the triangles as well. And I'm going to show that probably best using a slide. Slide eight. All right. So here's an example of what we can do. Um, we have the triangles that we know about. We also have what's called the GL triangle fan. And what that does is the first point becomes the center and everything else comes out from there. Zero to one, zero to two, zero to three. And you can see how that can, you can specify something with five points here or six points instead of 13, 14 down here. Um, the same thing with triangle strip, zero, one, two makes the first triangle, the third point, it makes a, tri a, a um, triangle with the previous ones. And so you can like kind of like play um, back and forth hopscotch there. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, it's a lot fewer points than the other ones. And OpenGL is smart enough to preserve the winding. It takes the winding zero, one, two in this case, and then for the next triangle, one, zero, uh, one, three, two. So it preserves the winding along the strip, the same thing with the triangle fan. So as long as you manage the winding for the first one, it'll maintain that for the rest of the, the shape, assuming that you use the coordinates appropriately. Okay, so let's take a break from triangles. That's all we have now for triangles. I'm gonna come back and learn about quadrilaterals.